So then today is January 23rd, <clears throat> and then this uh, we'll be here again in San Diego, the Santee. And today the Feast of St. Emerenziana, the main feast of the day is St. Raymond of Pinafort, who is a patron of canon law. <clears throat> St. Patron, St. Raymond was a Dominican and who was one of the greatest canon lawyers of the last uh, 2,000 years. Remember, the law of the church is meant <clears throat> for the salvation of souls, and that <clears throat> lawyers don't usually can think of as good people, but St. Raymond of Pinafort was a great lawyer and a great saint who realized the purpose of law is to help people live peacefully in a good society for the, in order to, to save their souls. And <clears throat> so he's a great uh, patron saint of canon law. But today is also the feast of St. Emerenciana, and the two considerations concerning her and her spirit in our times. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Emerenciana was only 13 years old when she died in 302 AD, 1,700 years ago, out of the persecution of Diocletian. And she shows a lot of this, one of the spirits of the martyrs. Because there are martyrs and there are martyrs. There is, remember that our Lord Jesus Christ said, Can you be baptized with the baptism wherewith I am baptized? And how am I straightened until it be accomplished? The Gospel of St. Luke chapter 12. He speaks of the sacred baptism. And this is the baptism of blood. By which he was born into this world in order to go to die on the cross for our sins. And he said, How am I straightened until it be accomplished? And he was speaking this in his human heart. Our Lord was speaking this in his human spirit, that he desired to go to the crucifix, because at the cross, where he would be scourged and crowned with thorns and nailed to a tree, with this cross, he would save mankind. At this cross, he would pay the debt of sin. And he had a desire, and he'd be obedient to, to the will of his Father. And it showed the love of his Father. So he had a great desire to show the world the love of his Father, Therefore, he wanted to go to that cross. He had a great desire to remedy the justice that was required to be done to pay for our sins. And therefore, he went to that cross. And he had a great desire to save our souls whom he loves most deeply. This love drove him with a great desire, a great fire. And that the martyrs must demonstrate in their martyrdom these three loves. The love of the fulfilling the will of the Father the love of making reparation for the sins of man and their, and their, and their, and their problems and, and that we need to be make repentance for our sins, and the love of saving lost sheep. Now, there, is a, there are always lost sheep in every age, and there is a required requirement for there to be penance in every age, and God the Father loves every single person of every age. And therefore, it makes sense that in each age, there must be some souls who simply are driven by the fire of the desire for martyrdom. Emerenciana was one of these. She was a young girl who was not yet baptized, and she did not want anything except to express the love of God who was still preparing for her baptism. And she was on her way to, she was not yet Still a catechumen, and when her cousin Agnes was put to death, St. Agnes, her feast just a few days ago, and she was put to death. And so she went to take care of the body of Agnes, and some Roman boys came by and started mocking Agnes, and they started mocking the Catholic faith. And she was filled with a fire. And she said to them, You do not mock the religion of the true God, whom Agnes worshipped. You have no right to mock the true God. And she knew that when she told them, you cannot mock the true God. And when she knew that when she stood up for the rights of God, she knew two things would happen. She knew, number one, they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't listen. You know, very often when we correct people, when you correct someone, someone cusses. Someone does bad things. You correct them. And why do you correct them? So that they can fix their problem, so that they can realize they did something wrong. But sometimes you will correct people, and they will not fix what they did wrong, but they will do even a greater evil. 
Then normally, if you're if someone says a bad word and you tell them don't say that anymore, and they blaspheme the more, then you just leave them be and you, you offer it to God. But St. Thomas Aquinas says there are times and there are situations in which even though the emperor is not going to repent, the king isn't going to change his laws from wickedness to goodness, the mob isn't going to convert from God, to, from the devil to God, we must still stand up for the truth, for the sake of the rights and the glory of God. And even though they won't listen, what will happen is it will still benefit the general church. It will still benefit the general truth. And somewhere along the line, some soul is going to benefit. There must be a speaking out of the truth, even times when those who are hearing that truth don't want to listen. So St. Thomas tells us, very often, if someone doesn't listen, then don't worry about it. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, if you go to one city and they uh, don't accept your teaching, and they don't accept Christ, and they don't accept the truth, and they reject it, then leave that city and wipe the dust off of your feet. And this is what we often do. If you don't want the truth, if you reject it, we offer the truth to you. We offer life to you, we offer goodness to you, we offer God to you, we offer the faith to you. And if you don't want it, and you refuse it, and refuse it, and refuse it, then fine, we will walk away. But is this done always? No, it is not. St. Anthony, for instance, when he preached his famous sermon to the fishes, he was already three days in the city of Torino. He preached to them the truth. And they walked away and they spit on him, a saint that performed miracles every day, and they refused to listen to the truth of the gospel. And he refused to leave. The heart of God was inside of him. He says, I, even though they reject me, I'm not leaving this city. And he preached for three days. And they didn't listen for three days. And they abandoned him for three days, but he continued to preach. But they would come back periodically to see if he was still preaching. And sure enough, he was still preaching. Finally, on the third day, he turned and he commanded the fishes to come out of the sea. And he preached to the fishes, the servant that is still held on to us, to, that is recorded to this very day. And a boy came and said, Anthony is preaching to the fishes. And they came and listened to Anthony preach to the fishes. And when he preached to the fishes, he refused to turn to those people. He was facing the ocean and the sea, the ocean and the river that was running to the ocean. And there he preached to the fishes with his back to the people, and he preached aloud to the fishes, and the fishes listened to him, and the people came and came and came and came, and they converted because he preached to the fishes. Our Lord did say, if the people refuse you, run away, and if they refuse you, go and leave. However, he did not always do this. It is not the universal law, because love doesn't do those type of things all the time. Love is very strange. One day love is quiet. One day love walks away. Another day love cannot be budged. And this is what happened to Emerenziana and our Lord Jesus Christ himself and Anthony. Anthony did not walk away. Another day, James the Apostle, he was upset. He was angry. The Spanish people would not listen to him. And he remembered the teaching of Christ. If they will not listen to you and all of the miracles he performed, all the truth he preached, then walk away and wipe the dust off your feet. And so he walked away and shook the dust off his feet and he was leaving Spain. And as he passed through Saragossa, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to him on a pillar, Our Lady of the Pillar, and she said, James, I know the Spanish will not listen to you. Go back. Go back. And it's interesting about James, he did go back. But it took him a year or so before he would go back. He first took the only seven followers that were with him. He had seven followers, seven young men. He took them with him to Rome. I mean, to Jerusalem, where St. Peter still was. He had St. Peter ordain them priests, even though Hedroy Jacob himself was also a priest and a bishop. He then came back with those men. And when he came back, Spain converted to the faith and became a great Catholic country. But it was only after they rejected and James decided to walk away. So Anthony preached to the fishes and did not walk away. 
James heard the Blessed Virgin Mary and did not walk away. And they became great saints in Torino, who were the most wicked. And they became great saints in Spain. The greatest devotees of the Blessed Virgin Mary are found in Spain. Because there is where she said to James, Your preaching didn't work, your prayers didn't work, and you're one of the twelve apostles. But come back, after you've had Peter ordain these young men. Come back, and you will find they will all convert to the faith. And so that there must be a time and there must be souls who, when they are rejected, when everything goes bad, when they see the maliciousness of the wicked world around them, they still boldly preach and love the truth, which will lead to their martyrdom. Emerenciana stood up and she said, you boys have no right to mock Agnes, but they mocked her anyway. You will not mock the true religion of God that I am now getting ready to join. He will not do this. And she opened her big mouth, and because she opened her big mouth, she became a martyr. They turned on her, and they stoned her to death, and they killed her right there. She knew that they would not listen, but she spoke anyway, because the glory of God was more important. And she also knew that the expression of love and the expression of truth was more valuable than their repeating and parroting lies and vomit. And therefore her truth stands, her little sermon stands, 1,700 years after she died. They still stand. And Emerenciana, by the way, she's in my pectoral cross. I have a pectoral cross bishop. Her bones are inside of this pectoral cross, and her bones are inside of that altar, inside of the relics of the altar. And they say Mass on top of her every time I travel on the Mass circuit, and I'm always wearing hair on my, over my heart at all times. And when we put on this, this the pectoral cross, they say, remember the victory of the martyrs. We must remember that there will always be a victory of the martyrs. And the greatest martyrs were like unto Emerenziana, who stood up, and even though at the time they didn't convert, they did not convert. He used to wear the red sash in honor of St. John de Brito, and the first great saint of, 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 of India was one guy, was one guy the, the, uh, uh, Gonzalo Garcia. He was martyred in Japan. And he preached to the Japanese people of Nagasaki. He preached to them. When he said to them, You are not converting. You refuse to convert. You're crucifying us 27. Which there were a couple of priests, and he was not a priest. He was only a brother. But he was the first one to be crucified. And they crucified him, and he says, You are not converting. And because you are not converting, God will one day destroy the city of Nagasaki. It will happen. God will destroy this city. But there shall also be conversions. And they didn't happen at that moment, but they happened later. And the 27 martyrs of Nagasaki, of which he was one, he brought about the conversion of his own hometown in India. But when they, when they in India, they realized that one of our own, Gonzalo Gracias, they have the song they sing now for the last 400 years. And they sing Gonzalo Garcia, Gonzalo Garcia, a little child of Vasai, he is one of us, and he shed his blood for Christ. And they converted to the faith. Because one of their own died for Christ. He died in faraway Japan. And the Japanese did not convert. But his blood went back to India and converted his, 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 his the relatives there. He himself was an orphan, killed by the, his parents killed by the Muslims, raised by the Jesuits, died a Franciscan in, in Japan, far from his own land. But the blood reaches the heaven and the blood comes down to earth. There will be times when we must stand up against the enemies of God, like the Vendée did in France. They stood up against the enemies of God, and they were defeated. They were all slaughtered. They were wiped out, and the French Revolution won for a time. And the great saint martyrs of the Vendée in the early and late 1700s, they died. But their blood and their glory goes up to heaven, and it comes down. One place where 200 martyrs were buried in a field. They killed 200 men of the Vendée and they buried in the field. 
and Vatican II came. And after Vatican II, some young men stood up against Vatican II and they formed a convent, a monastery, a convent of Dominican young men and priests, and they found the place where those men were, and that's where they built their monastery and their convent, and where they continued the preservation of the Catholic faith. The blood went up into heaven, and the people of that time refused to receive its benefit, but the blood still came down to the others far away in Japan, Gonzalo Garcia. The blood of Emerenciana is still benefiting souls 1,700 years later. But when she stood up against those wicked boys, these boys did not convert. They are now burning in hell. But her blood was not wasted. Her glory stands. Our Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood for Caiaphas. He shed his blood for Annas. He shed his blood for Judas. He shed his blood for all those that are presently now damned. But his blood is not wasted, because the blood went to those who would repent, and the blood went to those who were sorry for their sins, and they became saints and shall still become saints. And hence the Lord Jesus Christ teaches us, you don't only just stand up. You don't only just stand up when you think you're going to get a reward in this life, when you're going to see the victory in this life. Because our Lord also said, one man sows, but another man reaps. One man sows, another man reaps. And so it must be throughout the history of our church. Emerenciana sowed, but she did not see the reaping, but now she does. She's in heaven and she sees all the benefits of her great martyrdom when she died as a young girl in great glory. And all the other martyrs like her experience the same kind of glory. Now we're in a time where the wicked have taken over our country in a very visible way. What are we to do? We must still hold our faith and even though the enemies of God seem to be winning the day, they shall not win the day. They win for a brief hour, but their day is finished. And we must understand also that when we stand with the truth, even when those around us don't seem to be accepting us, and those around us don't seem to care, if we stand with the truth and we have deep love of Christ in our hearts and we're ready to shed our blood for him, even without a visible recompense, there shall be a great glory and there shall be a great victory. That is what's going to happen. Emerenciana has her victory now. And those boys are dead and gone and forgotten and buried in hell. Their time was very brief. And it was a thousand three hundred years ago. Forgotten and gone. But her time continues. Her bones are here in America. Her bones are also in other places. It was a sacristan, the devotion of Emerenciana was in charge of making, for carrying altar stones. So I put her bones in every single altar stone. And in, also in, in altars throughout the world of the Society of St. Pius X. So her bones are at least in 50 different altars and 50 different stones throughout the world. And that when the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is still being offered on those, those sacred bones, her victory still stands 1,700 years after she died at the age of 13. And the faith still spreads. So today is a, is, is a great day of a, of a commemoration. Emerenciana. Every single saint that God made a saint. A little commemoration, some not remembered at all by the majority of men. Everyone has a most wonderful glory in heaven. And everyone has a most wonderful place in which they belong. And they shall not be forgotten. And Emerenciani is a saint because she would not be silent in the face of wicked lies. And she spoke out boldly. And her tongue was offensive to those who were around her because they hated God. And they brought her to heaven. They brought her to heaven. And we must also be on the way to heaven. And we pray that there be some souls of our times with the spirit of St. Emerenciana, the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, when he said, Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to see, can you be baptized in the baptism with I am baptized? How am I straightened until it be accomplished? With the spirit of St. Teresa of Avila, who ran away from home to be martyred by the, by the Muslims. The spirit of St. Anthony, who also said, I will become a Franciscan on the condition you can guarantee my martyrdom. And they said, no problem. We will make sure you go to, to, to Africa and become a martyr. He was never able to die that by way of a martyr, but he was a martyr of charity a martyr of divine love. And the fire of that desire to shed his blood for Christ caused there to be so many saints, 
so that Anthony is called the saint of the saints. This spirit must be given to us. We must not have an excessive love of our own physical health, an excessive love of being safe in our world but rather an excessive love of the safety of the divine love inside of our hearts, of the holy and sacred truth, and of the victory of the martyrs over the enemies of God, and the victory of Christ. This is the love that must be inside of us. Let's pray for that love to be deeply inside of us, and follow the example of the great saints, such as one of the little girls today, St. Emerenciana. So, as you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.